Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to make a comparison between the phasor diagram and what we're used to seeing more, the voltage as a function of time in a sinusoidal graph. So here we can see that if we have the, well, let's just go ahead and write it here. This is the velocity, uh, not the velocity, but the voltage as a function of time, which would be equal to the maximum voltage times the cosine of omega t. And then we see that we've shifted the voltage just a little bit. So then if we want to write this new equation right here, we can say that the voltage as a function of time is equal to the maximum voltage times the cosine of omega t plus a phase angle. So you can see that the whole graph has been shifted by a certain phase angle right there. And then you can see that the vertical distance from the horizontal axis, the omega t axis, to where the graph crosses the... Um, the V of T right here, that would be the voltage at time equals zero. And then you can see that after that, the voltage will change over time. So now we're going to transfer that onto a phasor diagram. But in order to do that, normally we have the real axis as the horizontal axis and the imaginary axis as the vertical axis. We have rotated the phasor diagram by 90 degrees in such a way that we have the real axis in the vertical direction and the imaginary axis in the horizontal direction. It's still the real axis, the, the imaginary axis, even though it's rotated. The reason why we do that is so that we can draw the analogy between the two graphs. Now what we're doing here is the following. If we didn't have any phase difference and at time equals zero, the voltage would be the full amount right here, then we would have to draw the phase diagram straight up here and that would be the full voltage as a function of time equals zero at that very moment, at time equals zero. Then, now that we have a phase difference, we have to reflect that phase difference here. So the voltage, which is this height right here, will then have to transfer to the, the phasor diagram over here, where this represents the voltage at time equals zero, but here we have the maximum voltage. This is the magnitude of the phasor, and we can show you here that there's a phase difference between what it would be if there's no phase to where it is actually now there. So the phase difference here, or the phasor right here, gives you a snapshot at t equals zero. That's where the phasor is at. Now, the phasor diagram does represent the rotation of the phasor as time moves on. We notice that we have a rotation in radians per second, which is represented by omega. That's the angular frequency, as we call it. And then if a certain amount of time elapses, let's say time equals t, then this would be the distance traveled around the phasor diagram. So some time later, you can see that, again, some time later, we're now at this location right here when this much time has elapsed. And then you can see that this would be the voltage at time equals t. Then we could come across here and we see that this is the voltage at time equals t on the phasor diagram. So the phasor simply shifted over this way. And the, the translation of the vector onto the real axis is what represents the real voltage at any point in time. This is the voltage at t equals zero. This is the voltage at t equals t. So this would be a negative voltage that reflects the negative voltage right here that we have on the sinusoidal diagram. So a phasor diagram simply shows that the phasor just keeps rotating around and that represents the magnitude of the voltage as we go through time like this, just like we'd see on the, on the sinusoidal diagram, we see the exact same thing on a phasor diagram. So the phasor diagram represents a sinusoidal diagram by simply rotating the phasor around the diagram and the vertical component in this case or the reflection of the, of the vector onto the real axis is what gives you the momentary or instantaneous voltage at that moment in time. So hopefully that will give you another good look and a better understanding of what phasor diagrams are. Of course, normally we represent them turned this way, so we have the imaginary axis this way, the real axis that way, but it works any way you want to rotate the phasor diagram. So hopefully that helps you a little bit more, and we'll continue to show you some more videos related to the phasor diagram that after a while you have a really good understanding and a real good feeling for what phasors are and how they're going to be used. And that's how it's done.